Acres of Diamonds by Russell Conwell. This is a very short book, but we're going to get into a very deep discussion because I believe it's very important to realize that we have within our awareness right now everything that we need to create the success that we want. The question is, do we value it? Do we recognize it? The story of Acres of Diamonds is a metaphorical story about a man who had a vast land in which he sold to go out and search for riches. He wanted to create a lot of success for himself, so he went out to go search for riches. And then he struggled for many years to create that success that he wanted, to find those riches, and then eventually did not end up achieving his dream. And they realized afterwards that the land that he sold actually contained a very rich source of diamonds. In other words, he had access to the opportunity, but because he did not take the time to really value what he had, to educate himself on what he had, he was not able to recognize the truth that the answers are always in front of our face, and that's the truth for everyone. One of the greatest benefits that I had starting out from very humble beginnings is you didn't have a lot to work with, so you had to work with what you had. And as a result of working with what you had, you were able to create results. You would be able to see success in areas where others would see impossibilities, failure, circumstances beyond the control of most people. And one of the greatest benefits of being in an environment like that, which we all have access to right now, by the way, because a lot of us, even if we live in a very abundant environments, which most of us do, we do not recognize the opportunities that we have. And with this video, I want to instill in you the recognition of the opportunities that you have right now. One of the things that I learned, best skill that I learned in my life, is to be able to find success and opportunities in areas where others see it as impossibility. And no matter where I went in life, as a result of that, I kept practicing and building that skill without really even knowing until I came across this book. And then I realized it really hit me epiphany that this is exactly what I was doing. And this is something that I want to give to you so that you can do it with what you have right now so that you too can turn any situation that you have in your life right now into one that helps move you forward, propels you forward towards the very specific vision that you have in mind with the recognition and the realization that the answers are always in front of your face. That stated, you are right now in the middle of your own acres of diamonds. And the acres of diamonds starts with what is in your mind. We become what we think about. Consciously and subconsciously, there are many thoughts that are in our subconscious mind that have been programmed by the external world. One of the things that we have to do is we have to go in and we have to identify this programming and we have to remove it and replace it with empowering, possibility-based, success, consciousness-based programming. Because when you do that, you will be able to recognize that the circumstances, the situations, the environment that you have right now is actually an opportunity. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to stay in the environment or the circumstance, but it contains within it knowledge and wisdom that when acquired will transform the current circumstance into success and propel you, if you want it to be so, out of that circumstance into another circumstance in which you'll learn and repeat the lesson over and over again, creating for yourself higher and higher levels of success. A great many years ago, I purchased a fine dictionary. The first thing I did with it was to turn to the word impossible and neatly clip it out of the book. That would not be an unwise thing for you to do. Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Clipping the word impossible out of your vocabulary is one of the first things we need to do to really value the circumstance and the opportunities that we have right now. And it doesn't matter what anyone has to say about this right here. Once you do this, the way you look at the world, the way you look at current circumstance will change. See, the truth is this opportunity is there in front of us all the time. And that when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. You can give a circumstance to one person and all they will see is opportunity. All they will see is abundance. All they will see is happiness. And you can give that same circumstance to another person and all they will see is misery and negativity and discomfort 
and hardship and failure. Who is right? In the Kambalayan, we say, all truths are half-truths. And that's stated, what means is, however you believe it to be is the way. In the Bible it says, as you believe, so it shall be done unto you. So it shall be done unto you is the thoughts that you have in your mind. As you believe is the way it'll be done unto you. So if you look at a circumstance and you say this is going to be hard and challenging and stressful, that's how you believe it will be done unto you. If you take that same circumstance and you say, I will find flow in this circumstance, which is one of my great philosophies that I always talk about when it comes to your work day. See, most of us on this channel, we're creating success, entrepreneurial success, career success. We're looking to rise up to a higher level because we deserve it. And the way we go about doing it, we have choices. You can go about it doing it in a frustrating, stressful way, or you can enjoy the process and be in flow and learn and grow. Now, this doesn't mean you won't go through hardships and challenges, but instead of looking at it from a place of defeat and brokenheartedness, you're going to find yourself uplifted by them. The question is, do you believe this to be so? Now, if you ask a lot of people and they're not within the sphere of what we're talking about, they're going to say it's impossible or it's going to be very hard. They're going to come up with all kinds of stories. Why? Because in your subconscious mind, you are looking for that validation. However you believe reality to work, consciously and subconsciously, it will be so. As the saying goes, as you believe, so it shall be done unto you. And if you look for validation on how things lead to failure or how there's negativity or how there's hardship, you will find it because maybe you don't consciously want to find it. But perhaps there's programming in your subconscious mind that comes from past circumstances and situations that orients you to find that negative validating information. This is why it's important, and I always do this, is pad and paper. Take notes of the meanings, the values, and beliefs that you identify within yourself when you look at circumstance, people, scenarios, environment. And ask yourself, what is it revealing to you about the programming that's in your subconscious mind? And know, and first believe it's possible, that you can go and change this. A whole chapter dedicated to this was in Think and Grow Rich, the auto-suggestion chapter. Opportunities multiply as they are seized, Sun Tzu. Opportunities multiply as they are seized. And the opportunity is in your mind. You can right now believe that what I'm saying is true because it is true if you believe it is true. And that right there opens up an opportunity in your mind to look at your current circumstance and your environment and the opportunities that you have and find ways, be stimulated, trust the power of your subconscious mind to attract the resources, to orient you in the right direction so that you find the way to seize that opportunity. And I'll guarantee you this. There's thousands upon thousands, if not millions of ways of seizing that opportunity that has not been discovered yet. Steve Jobs said, you cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. And what this means is that when somebody creates success, it's easy to reverse engineer. But when they were on the journey to creating success, most of them had no idea how they were going to do it. If you ask me how I was able to get to a certain level of success when I built my IT business or rose up the ranks in corporate or doing what I'm doing right now in coaching and consulting and so forth, I had no idea how it was going to happen. But I had faith that I was going to make it happen because I had one paramount thought that was instilled in me. And I'm very blessed to have that instilled in me at a very young age as a result of starting in humble beginnings. And I'm instilling that in you that there is always a way and that you are going to find that way. You have to have faith. We're going to talk about faith in a moment. In life, when we go searching for something, we should know what that something looks, smells, and tastes like so we can recognize it when we find it. In the Robert Diltz model, which I always refer to in all my training programs, and the very top is vision. In the discussions that we've been having on Neville Goddard's work, we've been talking about assuming the wish fulfilled. In Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, it is brought up to use the statement of auto-suggestion. In my subconscious mind training program, I talk about 
repeatedly affirming that which you used to become using I am statements and emotionalizing and visualizing. There's a reason why you do this. Because what that cultivates is faith, the belief, the idea that the way will be found and that you will find it. The world we live in is a very interesting world. I believe that our purpose here on this planet is to learn how to create something that has never been created before to add to the contribution of others, evolution, evolution to yourself, evolution to the planet, and evolution for generations to generations to come. And the way we do it is we have to look beyond what exists now. And in order to look beyond to that what exists right now, we have to have faith. We have to believe that something can be made to happen that has never existed before. And if you look at all the greatest inventions and you look at anything that has been created in the world right now that we kind of just take for granted a lot of times, it has been a net result of somebody that saw it as a possibility. They believed in it and they were able to create it. How they created it doesn't really matter. See, most of us focus a little too much on the how. We live in a time where there's a lot of people that are so caught up and in their head about looking to see what other people are doing before they make decisions, asking others how they should live reality, rather than really looking within themselves and saying, what is it that you really want to do? One of the things we have to learn in this journey is to have faith in ourselves. And always remember this. If you go looking for validation, you will find it. You will find validation in the possibility. You will find validation in the impossibility. If you do a search and you find on the internet how things are negative in reality, you're going to find countless information to validate that. If you go and do a search for how things in reality are positive and in your favor, you're going to find countless information to validate that. As you believe, so it shall be done unto you. And the goal here is to train ourselves to value the opportunities that we have right now, to realize that what we have, everything in our life is an opportunity. In one of my favorite books, The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. You have everything that you need to create the results that you want. You have to first believe it's possible and you have to have faith. Now let's talk about faith. From Think and Grow Rich, the following quotes. In connection with this, consider against this statement. All thoughts which have been emotionalized, given feeling, and mixed with faith begin immediately to translate themselves into their physical equivalent or counterpart. See, the answers are always in front of our face. We are standing right now on our own acres of diamonds. The question is, that, do you believe that this is the way it is? If you have the thought that you are, and you begin to visualize and emotionalize and you believe it as fact, you are going to have faith and then you're going to start to notice that reality is starting to shift. You're going to attract people, circumstances to you. You're going to behave different. Even if you don't believe that you attract people through law of vibration or what's discovered and discussed in Think and Grow Rich, look at it from this perspective. Your behaviors will still change if you believe. If you have faith in something, and you believe you can find a way, your behaviors are going to change, and your behaviors influence the environment. And those behaviors are automatic based on faith. Your belief or faith is the element which determines the action of your subconscious mind. So we have our conscious mind, we have our subconscious mind, and our subconscious mind is responsible for so many nuanced details of how we behave that you could invest your entire life studying your own subconscious mind and you will still uncover concept after concept and realization after realization and never hit the end. It's all within your subconscious mind. So it then makes sense to tap into this power and work with this power. And the one way that we have known to be able to influence the subconscious mind is by conscious programming it. See, the truth is this, you're already being programmed by the external world. When you watch TV, when you watch videos, when you read books, when you talk to people, when you're exposing yourself to environment, that information is going in and programming your subconscious mind. 
And it's either programming you from an empowering perspective or it's programming you from a disempowering perspective. And now that you have access to this knowledge, realize that the choice is yours. You can guard your mind. You can protect your mind. You can infuse your mind with information related to belief and faith. You can choose to surround yourself with people, circumstance, and information that will validate that the opportunities that you have right now, the environments that you have right now, is where the acres of diamonds can be found. And you do this and feel it and experience it to the point where you realize the opportunities. And as, st as stated here, your subconscious mind will get you to automatically execute upon those opportunities. Your subconscious mind will find the opportunities, number one. And number two, your subconscious mind will get you to automatically have the behaviors to execute upon those opportunities to produce the results. But you have to, again, first believe that this is possible. And we don't need to have any more proof because we know that most of human behaviors is subconscious. And we know that most of those subconscious behaviors come from programming that they either consciously or unknowingly put into their mind. And we have the power to change that program. The subconscious mind will transmute into its physical equivalent by the most direct and practical media available. Any order which is given to the state of belief or faith, that order will be carried out. Now, you can find countless examples of people that have programmed their mind consciously with ideologies, both positive and negative, that have manifested behaviors of extreme positive and negative. And that is a net result of what we're talking about right here. So what I talk about on this channel is the same thing over and over again. I just say it tens of thousands of different ways that you become what you think about. And my goal in this channel is to instill with you the power that you have already which is that you create your reality. It doesn't matter what anybody says. You have more power than anyone else in this world if you believe that it's possible to create the reality that you want. Okay, I'm not talking about imposing your ways on other people. I'm talking about creating the reality that you want, the life that you want, the success that you want. You have all that power within you in your subconscious mind. And the goal is to program yourself by reading books like this and studying this information that I'm talking about in this video and watching this video over and over again till you realize with absolute fact and faith that you can consciously choose the information that goes into your mind to feed you to value the opportunity that you have right now even if you did not if you do this with repetition if you're doing what I'm saying with repetition you're going to find that you're going to believe 100% with faith that all circumstances that you have right now are opportunities and they are acres of diamonds. They are acres of diamonds. I know because I've consciously done this. I know because I've worked with many coaching and consulting clients to do this to the point where they realize and identify the opportunities and the way to execute upon those opportunities automatically to produce the results. A mind dominated by positive emotions becomes a favorable adobe for the state of mind known as faith. A mind so dominated may at will give the subconscious mind instructions which it will accept and act upon immediately. So the goal here is to saturate and dominate your mind with faith. Remove any kind of contrarian information that denies the possibility to really value what you have right now, to deny any of the possibilities that right now within your environment, within your current circumstance, is absolutely everything that you need. Feed yourself only with supporting information that helps you identify and really value the opportunities that you have. And I did a lengthy discussion on Jay Abraham's book, uh, Mr. X, a three hour discussion on monetization. When you take somebody and I've talked to many entrepreneurs, they have businesses and you know, they say most entrepreneurs fail and entrepreneurship is risky. It is absolutely not true. Most entrepreneurs who fail have not 
I'd say all entrepreneurs who have not succeeded in business have not looked at all the possible opportunities, and there are more being discovered, of how they could have turned it around in their favor, how they could have improved their marketing, their selling. If I asked them about front-end, back-end, lifetime client value, risk reversal, and all these different concepts that were covered in that video, they have no idea what I'm talking about. And when they say that they fail was a net result of X, Y, Z, I look at them and I say, well, the reason why you failed at that, and I don't mean to you know, really be up in your face about it, is because you did not look at the varying scope of possibilities that you could have gotten access to if you first cultivated within yourself that faith. And I'm not shaming you for this. I'm just telling you this is how reality works. Is that first, if you believe you will find what you're looking for, you're going to find it. And there's already been a million different ways that have been discovered that you probably have not gotten access to, but you can look for that information. And one of the things that I always aim to do on this channel is to share that information. That one hour video, not the one hour video, but three hour video that I did on Mr. X has so much monetization and business building strategies and systems that guaranteed most businesses are not even using a small percentage of it. Now, why am I bringing that up? Because if you program your subconscious mind to look for ways to turn the current business opportunities that you have into success, then you will attract a book like that. You will start to put emphasis in that video. You'll start to value the information contained within that video. One of my favorite concepts that I talk about was actually not one of the most popular videos on my channel is this finance spreadsheet video, in which I talk about quantifying, tracking time, and really figuring out where your time, energy, resources, opportunity goes, and opportunity cost goes, so you can execute upon that with precision to create results. That is something that successful entrepreneurs do who create success after success. But I will never force anyone to learn that information. You have to, within yourself, have that desire to want to learn that information. That's called specialized knowledge. And that only comes when you start to value opportunities that you have, because then you start to say, well, I can look at what I have right now even better. I got this opportunity. I'm not getting the results that I want, but that's only because I'm not valuing this opportunity as well as I can. What are the other ways, the thousands and thousands of ways other people who have similar opportunities that I have or have the exact opportunities that I have are making it work? And how do I implement absolutely everything that I can till I get success? See, that's the big determining factor is, did you try everything that you could possibly try? And as you were going up and, and trying things, how were you going about doing it? Were you doing it from a place of fear and frustration and anger? Or were you doing it from a place of flow? All these things matter. But the truth is this, in relation to this book, you are standing on your own acres of diamonds. And the way you go about creating that success with the acres of diamonds is going to be determining, uh, determined by, first, Clipping out the word impossibility from your mind. Number two, having faith that it is possible. And number three, making a commitment to yourself that you're going to search for many different ways that you haven't identified yet and you're going to take action on those ways with the current opportunity repeatedly till you create success. And realize that there's probably thousands and thousands of people that have taken the current opportunity that you have right now and have created success and you can get access to them and you can learn from them. Which brings me to my next point. Begin where you are and what you are. See, the goal is to grow yourself. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, yes, but you have to change yourself within. The outer world is a reflection of yourself within. You go back to the story of Acres of Diamonds. He did not see himself a certain way. He didn't educate himself and have faith in the possibility that he had everything within his awareness. And thus he went searching elsewhere because if he left it to the power of the subconscious mind by instilling faith in the subconscious mind, he would have identified ways. So the goal here is to begin where we are right now. Okay. Take inventory of all the opportunities that you have, the tools, the resources that you have, and make a commitment that you're going to work with what you have and who you are. Maybe you need to improve your communication skills. Maybe you need to learn marketing, selling, 
business building skills. There's tons of information that I've put in this channel, and there's tons more informational uh, information available on thousands of different channels on YouTube, books, seminars, programs, mastermind groups, Facebook groups, webinars. This information is out there and you can take that and integrate it into who you are to build yourself up. So begin where you are, value your opportunities and evolve who you are. Maintain a ready mind, be open to the possibilities around you. Again, this is a conscious thought and a subconscious thought. Keep your mind open and ready, sharpen your mind. Place yourself around people, circumstances, and scenarios that keep your mind focused on can do possibility and opportunity. Remove yourself from scenarios and environments that disempower you, that make you feel like you can't do it because that's not true. The only reason why you're in environments like that is because there's programming in your subconscious mind that made you feel like you are not worthy, that you are not good enough. And I recommend reading books like the power of self esteem or six pillars of self esteem by uh, Nathaniel Brandon, number one, how to be your own best friend, what to say when you talk to yourself and psycho cybernetics to really evolve the self image that you have within yourself to one of faith and higher levels of confidence so that you can keep your mind open to the possibilities. Now, if we're talking about business building and success, remember that your success is going to be a net result of your ability to create success for others. In other words, creating products that are needed and useful. So let's talk a little bit about this handful of points here. And these are areas that you can optimize. This just goes to show you to expand your mind of the many ways that you might not have been looking at your current opportunities right now. In relation to your audience, your market, your prospects, how can you speak to them based on where they are and what they may or may not know what they are looking for? Now, this is an interesting question to ask. You might think that you understand your prospects. You might think that you understand your clients, but you might not realize that they don't see how what you have to offer is actually beneficial to them. You haven't learned how to bridge that communication. What are different communication models that you can learn? Neurolinguistic programming, copywriting, direct response marketing, difficult conversations, just communication skills as a whole, public speaking, language, the use of words, a lot of different things that you can do to bridge how what you have to offer is a value to them in a way that they're compelled to want to do business with you. What are their emotional hot points and how could you tie them into the benefits of doing business with you? How can you get more personal one-on-one -on -one in a tone that shows them that you understand them? They have to be, feel understood. As discussed many times, and if you haven't watched the video that I did on speed of trust, I recommend you do so. People do business with those that they like and trust. How can you take your entire marketing and selling and design it in a way that is easier for them to comprehend? How can you leave them better off now than when they have crossed paths with you in the first place? How can you increase and demonstrate your trustworthiness? How does your story relate to theirs? How can you be more clear on the steps you want them to take? What creative ways can you quantify your value proposition? If you don't understand what that means, I recommend watching the video on Mr. X. What are better ways that you can turn the risk around risk reversal? If you're looking to create success in business and you want to create success as an entrepreneur, you have to learn about these things that I'm talking about. These are all, all opportunities and areas that when you understand them, you educate yourself so that you can value you can value what you have right now. Okay, looking at what you have right now, the opportunities that you have right now, potentially, you might not see the varying scope of options of how you can take what you have and turn it into money, turn it into success beyond your wildest dreams. But when you have a desire to learn these things I'm talking about, which happens as a result of cultivating faith by programming your subconscious mind to value these things and removing disempowering information, 
you're going to find all kinds of ways of turning what you have from an educated perspective into success. We become what we think about. This is from The Strangest Secret. I want to discuss a handful of points here. Marcus Aurelius, the greatest Roman emperor, said, A man's life is what his thoughts make of it. Disraeli said this, Everything comes if a man will only wait. A human being with a settled purpose must accomplish it, accomplish it, and nothing can resist a will that will stake even existence for its fulfillment. William James said, we need, we need only in cold blood act as if the thing in question were real and it will become infallibly real by growing into such a connection with our life that it will become real. It will become so knit with habit and emotion that our interests in it will be those which characterize belief. He continues, Only you must then really wish these things and wish them exclusively and not wish at the same time a hundred other incompatible things just as strongly. Now let's reflect upon that last point there. Only you must then really wish these things and wish them exclusively. And we're talking conscious mind and subconscious mind programming. You might have a conscious desire to create success, and you might even have some, some subconscious elements towards that favor. But you could have thousands and thousands of subconscious mind disempowering ideologies and beliefs that need to be rewritten that are contrarian. And as a result of those contrarian beliefs, you are not wishing at the same time, a or you are wishing at the same time a hundred other incompatible things just as strongly. We become what we think about. This world is a reflection of who we are. How we go about dealing with the current circumstance and the environment reveals to us about ourselves. How we look at opportunities that we have right now reveals to us about ourselves and to others. If you're the kind of person that doesn't value what you have right now, what does that say about you to those that look up to you as a leader? And recognize this, it is not your fault. We're not about shaming ourselves here. It's about understanding ourselves. And realize that this programming was placed in your subconscious mind through past experiences. However, you can go and change it now. You can go and remove those hundreds and thousands of incompatible thoughts that are polarizing, that are contrarian to words or contrarian against your definite cheap chief aim, your vision, and the valuing of the opportunities that you have right now. You can identify what they are and you can change them. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale put it this way, if you think in negative terms, you will get negative results. If you think in positive terms, you will achieve positive results. As I'm going through this video, as I'm having this conversation with you, what are the disempowering and negative things that come up for you when you think about your current circumstance and opportunity? And how can you create affirmations to rewrite that into positive affirmations and repeat them to yourself over and over again till you believe it with faith, visualizing and emotionalizing it as fact? Because then what's going to happen is then you're going to start to see validation for those truths. They're truths to you. You're going to start thinking positive and you're going to start behaving in a certain way that's going to move you towards your results. George Bernard Shaw says, people are always blaming their circumstances for what they are. I don't believe in circumstances. The people who get on in this world are people who get up and look for them, the circumstances that they want, and if they can't find them, make them. The people who get on in this world are the people who get up and look for the circumstances they want, and if they can't find them, make them. The human mind is much, much like a farmer's land. The land gives the farmer a choice. He may plant in that land whatever he chooses. The land doesn't care what is planted. It's up to the farmer to make the decision. The mind, like the land, will return what you plant, but it doesn't care what you plant. If the farmer plants two seeds, and one is a seed of corn, and the other is nightshade, a deadly poison, waters and takes care of the land, what will happen? See, one of the things we have to do as we're going through this journey and having these discussions is we've got to practice persistence. Persistence 
so that we can instill these empowering thoughts, so we can instill and protect our mind to really value that we are, in fact, sitting on our own acres of diamonds right now by consuming only information that validates that. Now, if this is success that you want and you have a burning desire, then this may sound like a very extreme way of going about doing things, but how bad do you want it? Do you want it? Is this something you're really serious about? If you understand how the subconscious mind works, which by the way, by now you should from watching all my videos, have a good grasp on how the subconscious mind works, then you realize that you are a programming or you are a net result of the programming that's in your subconscious mind and you can change this programming. Therefore, let's read this statement. Persistence is a state of mind. Therefore, it can be cultivated. Like all states of mind, persistence is based upon definite causes, among them these. And again, this is from Think and Grow Rich. Number one, definiteness of purpose. Knowing what one wants is the first and perhaps the most important step towards development of persistence. A strong motive forces one to surmount many difficulties. Definiteness of purpose and the realization that you have whatever you need right now to create success. You have the opportunities, you have who you are, and you can build yourself further. Number two, desire. It is comparatively easy to acquire and to maintain persistence by pursuing the objects of intense desire, the burning desire, the way we do it, visualization, affirmation, auto-suggestion, and supportive information while removing contrarian information. Number three, self-reliance. Belief in one's ability to carry out a plan encourages one to follow the plan through with persistence. Self-reliance can be developed through the principle described in the chapter on auto-suggestion. It's very important that you read Think and Grow Rich over and over again, especially the chapter of auto-suggestion in the subconscious mind. Number four, definiteness of plans. Organized plans, even though they may be weak and entirely impractical, encourage persistence. Organized plans. Number five, accurate knowledge. Knowing that one's plans are sound based upon experience or observation encourages persistence. Guessing instead of knowing destroys persistence. So what's the lesson that was learned by the man who did not value the land in which he had his acres of diamonds? He did not educate himself. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean he had to go out there and get a university degree or a master's or something like that. He just had to at least go out and seek some counsel. In Think and Grow Rich, Henry Ford, who I believe was a grade school dropout or high school dropout, I can't remember what he was, surrounded himself by those that were experts. He wasn't super educated himself, but he was educated enough to seek counsel. So you don't have to know a, a ton of things. You just have to have a mastermind. You just have to be able to get access to information as needed. But it starts with valuing what you have right now and realizing that there are ways of turning what you have right now into success, into results. Maybe his land, if it didn't have diamonds, he could have done something else with it. Who knows? Cooperation. Sympathy and understanding and harmonious cooperation with others tend to develop persistence. Number seven, willpower, the habit of concentrating one's thoughts upon the building of plans for the attainment of a definite purpose leads to persistence. See, when you've got a current circumstance or an environment or a situation right now that you're choosing to work with it as an opportunity to execute upon it till completion, till you find success, you have to practice persistence. Otherwise, you're just going to give up and you have to cultivate willpower. See, willpower is one of those things where if we don't value it, we leave ourselves open to be distracted and going down somebody else's groove leading into an area that we don't necessarily want to get into. You got to have willpower to create a vision and stick with it no matter what, all the way till the end, no matter what. That is willpower and it's a practice. It's an exercise. It's like going to the gym. You train your muscles. Well, you train your willpower. Number eight, habit. Persistence is the direct result of habit. The mind absorbs and becomes part of the daily experiences upon which it feeds. 
Fear the worst of all enemies can be effectively cured by forced repetition of acts of courage. Everyone who has seen active service in war knows this. So now that we've talked about persistence, and I know we've gone really deep beyond the concepts that were covered within the book, but however, related. See, even though it's a small book, we have two biases that we really need to overcome, and I learned these from Evan Pagan. I disagree, and I already knew that. I've been reading Think and Grow Rich now since 2004, and I keep a copy with, of that book on my desk. It's with me right now. And I read from it daily. It is a bias. It is a lie. It is a delusion to think that I know exactly everything that is within that book. Every time I read that book, every time I create success and I go back and read that book or anything happens in my business or in my life and I go back and read just a page from that book, I learn something new. This book is an acres of diamonds to me. It was the book responsible to get me out of $50,000 debt in 2004. It was the book that caused me to buy my first house, first beautiful house that I had at the age of 27. It was the book that caused me to leave corporate, although I was inspired by 4-Hour Workweek and Alchemist, as mentioned in one of my earlier videos. Think and Grow Rich gave me the tools necessary to leave corporate when I rose up to a certain level to go out and start a business and create success with it, the IT business that, that I grew up to 50 clients. It was this book that inspired me to start the channel, and it is this book that has created more success in my life than any other book, not just business success. This book has helped me with relationships. This book has helped me with personal development, with fitness. The concepts contained within this book are so valuable that if a person does not read this book over and over and over again, they are leaving success on the table and they're not valuing the opportunities. That's why I'm hybrid bringing all this together. You have, again in summary, access to whatever success you want to create. There are no limitations except the ones in your mind right now with the current opportunities that you have. You have it. Directly or indirectly, as a result of it, you will be able to create it. Well, the question then becomes, well, why did you leave corporate? If it wasn't for corporate IT, I wasn't able to start my IT business. The skills that I learned over there, learning about systems and security and technology at a corporate level, allowed me to parlay that over to managed services and IT services that I offered. The opportunity that I had prior to getting into corporate IT, where I had a computer at home and I would sit there all day setting up BBSs and trying to figure out things of how computers work, over and over again with persistence, that opportunity, that was my acres of diamonds. So I hope this is starting to shift your perspective now to realize that acres of diamonds might not necessarily just mean that business opportunity. It could be the relationship, the friendship. It could be a certain skill that you are developing. It could be a leisurely activity that you do that is contributing to something, but you're not valuing it enough to really execute upon it till it turns into money, for example, a passion project. A lot of businesses have started, and if you haven't watched my video, I recommend you do so on Opportunity by Eben Pagan. A lot of businesses have been started by passion projects. This YouTube channel actually was a passion project. I started making these videos back in the days. You can watch my earlier videos just as a place to share. And now it's a leg of my business. It's one entire leg of my business that's resulted in coaching, consulting, product sales, seminars, live events. A lot of different doors have been opened up by turning this passion project into something that's a viable business. But I learned business building skills through the various business initiatives that I work with. So one thing I want you to realize is that opportunities multiply as their seeds, but the skills to execute upon opportunities also, also multiply when you seize on the current opportunities that you have all the way till completion. Now, what prevents us from doing this? Why does a person not do what I'm saying right now? Well, there's a whole chapter dedicated to that in Think and Grow Rich, and it's called Fear. Before you put any portion of this philosophy into successful use, your mind must be prepared to receive it. The preparation is not difficult. It begins with study, analysis, and understanding of the three enemies 
which you shall have to clear out. Okay, I'm talking clear out. These are indecision, doubt, and fear. Indecision, doubt, and fear. Indecisiveness on the moves that you make in your business will lead to fear. It will lead to doubt and then fear. Doubt and fear and indecision need to be removed. When you remove this, you become more educated. You seek counsel. You seek education. You don't frustrate yourself by procrastination, which is the enemy of what we're trying to achieve here. Persistence is what we want, not procrastination, which is the opposite. Indecision is the seedling of fear. Remember this as you read. Indecision crystallizes into doubt. The two blend and become fear. The blending process often is slow. This is one reason why these three enemies are so dangerous. They germinate and grow without their persistence being or their presence being observed. Do not be the... Do not be deceived by the habits of these subtle enemies. Sometimes they remain hidden in the subconscious mind where they are difficult to locate and still more difficult to eliminate. Now let's bring this into very tight summary. You have within you right now and within your current scope of environment, opportunities, circumstances, everything that you need to realize that you have your own acres of diamonds. Everything. Number one. Number two, it is your indecision, doubt, and fear that prevents you from seeing this and valuing this. Now reflect back on the book, reflect back on this discussion, reflect back on your life and realize how what I'm saying is true. And in this last quote, sometimes they remain hidden in the subconscious mind. It is not your fault. You don't need to shame yourself because you have indecision, doubt, and fear. It was instilled in you. However, you can go in and reprogram your subconscious mind and remove those. And as you remove those, you'll notice yourself automatically valuing the opportunities, automatically doing the behaviors to execute upon the opportunities that you have right now. And a lot of times you'll realize that the reason why you are running away from everything is because of fear, because of doubt, because of indecision. You started something. It was moving forward. Then all of a sudden you stopped because you believe the grass is greener on the other side. So you want to go try something else. Rather than looking at how you have come so far and learned so much and all you need to do is seek some more guidance, some more education, some more understanding of how you can take it even further, switch perspective around, change the way you look at things. This world is a reflection of who you are. And how you do one thing is how you do everything. If you encourage those kind of behaviors that are based on indecision, doubt, and fear, as going back to earlier, I said, as you believe, so it shall be done unto you. And as you believe is a lot of times stored deep within the subconscious mind. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.